We're glad to know you're still there and watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And uh, time now for our first very hot topic and uh, to join me in discussing uh, the pronouncement of the president uh, that he has said. <laughs> to join me to discuss this is Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, founder, Lagos Forum. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Good morning. Okay. Uh, what we're talking about is that uh, the president, Tinubu, has set three years timeline for economic revival and has also set 50 million jobs a target. Let's get your comments on this. 50 million jobs and three years timeline for economic revival. Let's hear your talk, comments. Well, you see, um, the most interesting part of everything that uh, the president has said Sounds good, you know, and he's very audacious uh, with most of his time. And when you look at that, one of the things we have to see is how to run the economy without necessarily going uh, cap in hand, looking for where to borrow more money and putting ourselves in the mess. So if we can uh, do that, like uh, the minister said, that uh, we're not going to continue to borrow money. If we don't borrow regularly and we're able to manage what we have and increase on our foreign reserve, increase on most of this area that and close uh, the, 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 the loopholes in our economy as they are fighting these uh, all peace right now all over the place. You know, it is something that is possible within the next three years. Uh, the figure of 50 million may just be an additional thing like a say. How to achieve 50 million uh, jobs um, is, is something that we have to maybe uh, not be pessimistic, but then uh, especially optimistic about it. But it is not even the figure that matters. It is that the economy is moving in the right direction. Jobs are being generated. Those are the things. So gradually, even if we are able to achieve 10 million, even if we are able to achieve 5 million, it doesn't really matter, but let this thing be a continuous flow. Let there be hope that they can get a job after school. Those are the things that the people want. And if the country is not boring as before, and we are able to improve, listen, we are not even missing our quota in our production. So we cannot sell what we don't have. So if we are able to do that and we are selling, we are making our quotas, we are improving on our gas production, we are exporting gas. We have a lot of things we can export to make more money. So if that is Mr. President's idea and the, his movement are following that, then we are ready to move in the right direction. So there's nothing impossible if we are able to follow the right thing and do it not just because it's an idea. The problem is not lack of ideas in Nigeria. The problem is the execution. Execution and monitoring this whole process. And like you said, if the ministers, if any one of them doesn't perform well, he's ready to get them out. Let's see this in action. I believe these are good intentions. These are good ideas. He has a manifesto. He told us he wants to revive this economy. And I think he knows what he's doing because it's, it's his lifelong ambition to be the president. So he is actually uh, the man to do it because that is his ambition. That is his, his own way of looking at it. He has studied the of other presidents who are before him. So he knows, and he should know better. So if all his movements are there to work with him to succeed in this uh, game, then uh, this journey, because he's the driver, like you said, and they are conducting. If they are not going to uh, misuse the opportunity, look at what we are looking at in the, in the mineral sector. You know, mineral sector, the, the solid minerals, look at what has been done to it. It has been bastardized. People are just stealing the thing. And if we can curtail those, we are going to be very rich in this country. We are going to make more money. There's no doubt about that. But let us cut off these selfish ideas. If the ministers will go out to really walk the way they are promised to do this job, yes, it's possible. There's nothing that is not possible in those uh, agenda and in, in the manifesto. But then it depends on how transparent we are, how we fight this corruption that is, is, that is you know, endangering our lives. You know, so these are the things we have to do. If we have to stop a lot of importation, look at the kind of uh, cars and, 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 and trucks we are bringing in. We have to curtail that. We have to, you know, begin to look at 
how to produce enough food for ourselves in this country, first of all. How to do, look at the maritime sector, if we're able to improve on that. We don't, I don't know how many fishing trawlers we have in Nigeria or how many investors are really putting their money into the fishing business. So these are the kind of things that we have to improve. If we are able to convince people, look at in those days, you have the Ibu families. They have this fishing trawler. A lot of people are having trawlers in Nigeria. But right now, I don't know if we still have those people. So now we have to look at those areas where we are importing fish. You know, and we, are, we have islands, we have coastal, we have the sea, we have the lagoon, we have the lakes, we have everything that we can use to get what we have, what we need rather. You know, look at the textile industry. We are still importing, even the Ankara. And then in those days, we used to, we keep to say in those days, we can revive these things so that we will not put pressure on our foreign reserves and people can actually be happy. These are the areas whereby you will provide jobs, opportunity for the people. So let us begin to look at it. That's what I'm saying is audacious, and it's important that we have to be audacious. It's important as well that these programs, these uh, uh, projects have to be monitored, and it has to be transparent, so that whatever we are spending into this, then we have to tell ourselves that this is what and what we are gaining. It is the joy of the citizen that will bring more into the issue, because when the people are already engaged, there will be less uh, criminal activities. Because what we delay, what we, what we make the farmers want to go to farm, it is why should anybody go to farm and toil the whole day only to plant and not be able to have it? Because we have, you know, these people who are headers or who are headsmen or who are the people destroying the farm, they are human beings. And if they are Nigerians, if they are Africans, we can find a way to, you know, to disrupt that activity so that the farmers can go to farm and do their job. And if we have a flood, that we come and ravage the, the farms. Let's begin to protect it right now. So these are things that are possible. They are not, they are some, they are not something that is not possible. So that is why I'm saying is audacious, is something that can be achieved, and it depends on the people. And if we are sincere with ourselves, if we are serious, like this, the president has said, we should be able to achieve this in three years. And you know, the fact that he said three years gives us a good insight of what he thinks, because you know, the fourth year, will be a, a, a big year for campaigning and for political, you know, uh, move around. So the, within the next three years, and, you know, I keep saying it, uh, 100 days is not enough, but we can study the, the structure of the government within 100 days. We can study the programs of the government within 100 days. But to say we want to analyze or to see what the government is doing, how it's going to perform, yes, 100 days will not be enough. So we actually need the next three years or three years to see the effects. But people want to begin to see from now how this thing is going on, how it's going to affect them. And that is the major thing right now. They have seen this uh, subsidy. Gradually, they are coping with it, the, the, the subsidy being removed. But they are still looking at it. If the government says, we have realized uh, a certain amount of money in billions or trillions, and this is what we are spending the money on, then the people will be happy and they see the effect of that. And that is what is important, transparency and the fight against corruption. Because the system that, you know, people are still going to be stealing. That is the fear of the people. So if they can see the effect of this, then I think the joy of the people will contribute to the increase in our economic values as well. Um, when you were talking, I, I, I know you've tried to explain a lot of these things, but when you were talking, you said whatever it is, uh, to achieve this, it will depend on the people. Uh, I'd like you to just re-emphasize, uh, or, or for, for purpose of emphasis, explain to me what people you're talking about that it will depend on them for the government to succeed. Yes, the people are the people in government and the people that are being governed. You know, if the government uh, gives you a good rail system and some other people will go and copy it to derail. Mm. So it, it, it takes the people. But then the first is the people in government to put things right and begin to educate the government that this is what we are doing and this is what you should do to contribute to the well-being of the society. So it, it takes the two to tangle. The government might be doing a lot of good things and people go there to destroy it overnight. 
So who do you blame? True. Okay, well, um, now, this, this, you, have, you have said a, a lot of things, uh, really, but um, there are three schools of thoughts. Uh, that uh, three years, one, the first one is that, uh, is saying that three years is too long because Nigerians want to just begin to see the results, that the president should have given us timelines, like in the first six months, this is what I intend to do in one year, in two years, and all that, just giving a blanket of three years is too long. Nigerians cannot wait three years to f begin to see that the economy is turning around because they, they need to feed, they need to leave, they need to continue to enjoy themselves as citizens of Nigeria. The second school of thought is saying that uh, three years is not long enough, so the president is just talking, and they have written off all these things that he has said that he is going to turn around the economy that has been bastardized for so many years within three years without just giving a, a roadmap and all that. They have written it off. And the last people, the last school of thought is saying that he should have been specific, you know. He should have said, okay, I will reform this and that, X, Y, Z. To reform the entire economy of Nigeria may be a cumbersome task that he might never be able to fulfill. So he should have been specific on places or things that he needs to do. Maybe the power sector, maybe uh, agriculture, maybe one or two things and all that, and be, be specific and drive that. Uh, I mean, to the but did you get my point? Yes, I had a question. Okay. You want me to repeat? No, the first school of thought. First school of thought. No, the, the, the third one. one, that he should have been specific, uh, you know, have specific goals, things that he needs to revamp, because three years to revamp the entire economy might be a task that he might never be able to achieve. So he should have had specifics so that he can see them through. Maybe power, agriculture, security, a few of those things, and that are very, very pressing to Nigerians. But he's saying the entire economy. That's the third school of thought. Yes. Right. You see, uh, you see uh, in this kind of situation, I believe uh, no one will want to have these tags or timeline, like you said, because the economy is so bad that. Most economists are confused to even uh, get an idea how to structure it. So now, like I said earlier, now the people, <clears throat> excuse me, they are grappling with the issue of suffering. And gradually, they are coping with it gradually. So now, if the government begins to come out regularly, maybe monthly, quarterly, you know, to tell us that, look, this month, this is what we have. And this is how we are spending it. Mm -hmm then they'll continue to follow that trend. But he cannot project, for instance, that in the next six months, uh, this is what we are likely to have. Because in the first six months, the prices may not be constant. So now, if you are talking about economy that we're going to revamp the entire economy in the next three years, the ministers will be coming out to brief us on monthly basis, quarterly basis, depending on how they are planning their programs, and then that is why I'm saying that the people have to be carried along. Yeah. The Nigerian citizens have to be carried along. It is no longer a time for propaganda. It is time now for reality. So and people are more conscious of that now. They want to hold their government responsible. So now we should begin to see if uh, Wale Edu said, listen, we are not going to borrow. And he has to come and tell us we are expecting these in the area of gas, in the area of solid minerals, in the area of you know, once we have a, a what's it called now? Uh, refineries working. They said it's going to work in December. So once this thing starts working in December, you know, I think they should be cautious as well to give this timeline because, you know, people are conscious of it. If you say that, look, in the next six months, this will work and it doesn't work as planned, mm -hmm. anything can happen. Then, then the government has to come to explain again and the people will lose trust. There's no trust at the moment. So building trust, you have to avoid making promises. Mm -hmm. That is why I said, these 50 million, uh, you know, to say we're going to have 50 million people, I think that is very, very audacious to say, because we don't even know how these 50 million employment opportunities will be created. Mm. So we have to be cautious about trying to give time. But I know it's very good. I know it's very good. People will hold you responsible that in the next six months, you said it will happen. But let's still give them a chance. And that is what I'm saying. Let's give them a chance. We have seen what has happened with the palliatives now. 
you know, the government said this is the amount of money the, the state government can have. They, this will be free. This will be with interest in digit, uh, single digit. So if the government say, look, I'm, I'm not going to take it. It is the governor's prerogative that to say, I'm not going to take a loan again because I have so much. So, but he has given that money. How it should be distributed? It is between the governor and his local government uh, uh, officials. So let's begin to see that we make mistakes. I've said it before somewhere. They might make mistakes, and they should make mistakes if it's possible. But we don't have enough time to make grievous mistakes that cannot be quickly corrected. You know, look at when they said 8,000 will be given to everybody. That was something that was said, looking at it, maybe it will happen. But quickly, they corrected it that, no, this will not work. So now, now we are beginning to see ministers are now in their offices. They are now in place. We have the ministers responsible for various ministries. The thing they might do is just the MDA. We have over 1,000 MDAs. So let's bring down the number of the MDAs. And when we bring down the number of MDAs, we begin to scrutinize which one and which one will work, which one is not working. We still have a lot to do in that area of, uh, of uh, these uh, bloated uh, the ministries and, and MDAs. Well, well um, we, we thought that this administration would cut down on the ministries. Instead, it, it grew more. Uh, but the final question here, and we would like to have it very briefly, is uh, uh, the eight-point agenda of the president, how you think this will help him in achieving what we're talking about. He said food security is there, ending poverty, economic growth and job creation, access to capital, improving security, improving uh, playing field for everybody, uh, rule of law, and fighting corruption. Nigerians are very interested in the last two, uh, rule of law and fighting corruption. So in totality, how, how do you see this if you put them side by side with the promises? Do you think this is a, a thorough route map that can take us to uh, where the president is projecting that in three years we will be? Fantastic idea with the road map, fantastic idea with this eight point agenda. But I can tell you, we may not be able to achieve all the eight agenda into uh, what we can say it is 100%, and we can't see 100% of this eight agenda. And the area of rule of law and uh, fighting corruption is a tough one. And uh, Mr. Latif Fagemi has a lot to do in that area, the Minister of uh, Justice and uh, Attorney General. If he can bring all the reforms he's promised that will be made, and if we can see that there's no corruption and the judiciary is well uh, thoroughly managed and, and the structures are put in place, and to make it more independent, I think that can be what that can, we can set the ball rolling. And in some of these areas, we just set the ball rolling, and then we may not achieve 100%. That is my own opinion. In the area of corruption, it's a global phenomenon, and we can fight it as much as we, we can, but then it is now for us to have a consistent policy that others will continue. Corruption is not only at the federal level, it's at the local level, it's at the state level, and it's even in, 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 in homes and in, in churches and mosques. So it is something that has to be taken beyond the federal level. We always look at the federal level. Yes, because a lot have been stolen out there. But then let us begin to see how the agencies will work. It is not a, a situation in like in Kano where somebody, an agency is prosecuting, investigating, and another agency is investigating that agency. There's a lot of confusion. So we have to streamline some of this. And that's why I said that uh, Mr. Latif Fagbemi has a lot to do. And if all these reforms are put in place, I think we will set the ball rolling, but we may not get to the goal. Okay. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Femi Dagonro, um, we'd like to thank you for your thoughts this morning on uh, the show. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Okay, you too. That was Mr. Joe Femi Dagunro, found, the founder of Lagos Forum, uh, talking with us on uh, what the president has promised, 50 million jobs and also taking, uh, reviving our economy in three years. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll go to the next topic.